All right, gang, uh, thanks for sticking around. Uh, we're back. Um, hopefully everybody is refreshed. So real quick, I promised everybody a demo. All right, and we'll wait just a second for this to come up. And if uh, just to get us back to where we were, um, uh, we'll, at some point this will come up, there we go. Um, if you guys will remember, we have two um, uh, Knative services here. We, um, if you guys uh, went through, um, if you guys went through the actual uh, um, GitHub URL, and um, uh, you should be pretty much to this point. Um, And it's worth noting, um, we have two um, services, right? We just saw the Knative service representation of that. I'm using something called CamelK. CamelK, um, uh, what it does, we'll look at the actual code here in a second so we can see why this is um, uh, giving us event bus-like capabilities. Um, uh, CamelK is going to hook into Knative uh, serving. It'll go create um, things like the Knative services that we just saw previously. It'll also create things like Um, uh, subscription. Um, we'll likely, um, we have a few other um, things uh, sitting here in the same space. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, go over here to something that looks a little bit better. So um, we have uh, um, in our, uh, in Knative Eventing, we have in, uh, you guys will notice this is, uh, we're in our application namespace, Service MeshCon. We have a default broker. Um, I like to, uh, I'm more of a, uh, CLI guy, so um, we'll look at it this way. Cool, and so um, we'll notice we have this broker. Let's take a uh, peek at the YAML that actually represents that. And we'll notice a few different things. This is being configured um, for this particular tenant with a config map and its individual namespace. Um, uh, a time, uh, for, uh, talk for another day. But we want to engage in um, a notions of multi-tenancy with Knative Eventing. That's when we really start getting some great stuff out of Knative Eventing. Cool. Um, a few other things um, that we'll notice here is, ah, oh, yes. We'll notice um, here that um, we're actually a Kafka channel. So when we go look at the resources that we're laying down into this cluster, for instance, the channels we just looked at, we have two channels. And so what, we, what our particular demo will do, one Knative service will pop up. It's going to send messages um, into a Knative channel, into this testing DB events channel. Another guy is going to say, hey, I'm subscribed. That was the subscription we just looked at. I'm subscribed to that channel, and I'm going to do some stuff with it, and then I'm going to send it on its way. True kind of enterprise service bus behavior. Um, it's unaware. Our particular implementation is totally unaware of what these channels are. It doesn't know that, it's a, that Kafka is underneath doesn't know whether or not it's NATs. It doesn't know whether or not it's in, in memory channel. The only thing it knows is it's, per, it, it's engaging in this pub sub behavior from Knative. That's super cool. What that means is um, we can engage in some multi-tenancy, i.e. in one namespace we could use Kafka, the next namespace we could use NATs. Maybe we have a tenant that's not very important. They can stay in memory and they don't need to use up our resources. Um, but it also presents um, some things that we need to do. We need to have, um, uh, as mentioned previously, we've got some governance there, right? So we, we determine what this channel implies for a particular namespace, right? So if you've gotten past uh, the admin who's holding cluster admin and he says you're okay to uh, use Kafka, so on and so forth, um, uh, that's not material to your particular implementation. And so let's go over to Eclipse where I like to live. Um, and hopefully this is big enough for everybody. 
But we'll look at the first guy here. And um, uh, this is something called Apache Camel. And um, uh, I was just having a discussion with Ram over there. This is a DS, uh, DSL that attempts to be an idiomatic easy button. So you notice this is idiomatic, right? Um, uh, we're going to go. We're going to go transform something. We're going to go log something. Then we're going to go to another thing. What this particular guy is going to do is he's got a timer, right? Um, typical uh, um, kind of quartzy scheduler type of thing. Um, and then he's going to log some stuff out. He's going to uh, he's going to uh, set a body real quick. What a body is in Camel is just the uh, um, the thing that we're carrying around from this kind of idiomatic thing to idiomatic thing. Um, and then we're just going to go off to um, uh, do, 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 do. we're going to go off to um, testing the, uh, a channel, testing DP events. You'll notice this doesn't indicate that uh, it's a Kafka producer. I'm not wiring up a Kafka producer at all. It's just going to go to a, cha a K native channel called testing DP events. Then this guy event bus transformation integration is going to pick that thing up off of um, te uh, the testing DB events channel. He's going to do, or she is going to do some stuff to it. And then again, send it off to another uh, channel, which we'll notice here. Right. So, um, uh, so literally, this thing, uh, the, our second um, Knative service is just going to sit on the bus. He's, uh, she's unaware that um, we're speaking to Kafka. Um, uh, if we were to throw this into another namespace, the way we've wired up Knative eventing, um, it could be in memory, it could be NATs, so on and so forth. Again, um, the, uh, it is this core central notion of governance that we've gotten to in Knative Knati eventing, where our, we get out of our developer's way, we let them do what they want, but we govern what these, um, what these sources and sinks are in their actual physical implementation. For us, in this particular case, it's Kafka. Again, in other cases, it may be something else. Cool. So cool. So we'll notice the event sync integration guy is running. Um, again, we, if you, we just looked at this guy. This is the guy with the timer, and then he uh, emits off to an event. He's running, but he's already done all his stuff. So what I'm going to do, instead of forcing you guys to sit through like a build and stuff like that, I'm just going to uh, delete this pod. Once I uh, am able to type again. And we'll let that guy start deleting. Mm -hmm. Let's go over here. We'll do a get pods and see what's going on. And that guy we just noticed that was scaled to zero is now coming up, right? Um, and if we go interrogate this guy's logs to see what's going on here. We'll notice um, uh, that it's taking in messages off the event bus and uh, it's doing some stuff, right? Uh, it received a service uh, a message, service mesh, uh, welcome to cloud native integration. And then it's saying, oh yeah, by the way, um, uh, it's going to add some more stuff in and then we're going to go off to another Knative uh, channel. What these are physically underneath the cover are actual Kafka topics, right? Um, and those Kafka topics um, uh, um, could be, we could simply, um, uh, somebody else in another namespace, another one of our applications, can now just pick up off of that particular Kafka topic, right? If we lose our runtime, so on and so forth. Um, if we lose Kafka, hopefully we're replicating over to another data center, right? Or um, uh, potentially another cloud, right? <clears throat> And this allows us to get those cloud native runtime capabilities also while injecting governance into the situation. Also, um, remember MI, the white paper we, uh, we were discussing previously, we're not looking to get into the way of developers. 
We want them to be able to do their stuff. We want them to be able to do it quickly. Um, providing uh, a um, service bus implementation that is um, decoupled to uh, these kinds of monolithic notions uh, that our old ESBs used to be, right? Our old ESBs used to have, you know, service component assembly. You had to use a t t uh, type of message, uh, message type. It had to do the following things. You had to adhere to a canonical schema. We get all those things, but still can allow you to be uh, Kafka message. We can allow you to be AMQP. We can allow you to be NATS. We can allow you to do um, a lot more than that. So let's go check out what this graph looks like in Kiali. And you guys will notice um, it's pretty verbose. Um, one of the reasons we went through our schematics previously, um, if, I if I went over here and tried to point out all these points to you guys, um, it'd be pretty rough. But we can notice um, where some of our traffic is going through um, here in Kiali um, uh, and the different ways that it's um, heading. Let's go over to Jaeger and see um, what's going on here. Go. Cool. All right, we'll look at the, uh, this individual service. Uh, which one is it? Here, we'll just look at this guy. All right, we'll, um, we'll look at one of our uh, dispatchers, right, that we've wired up into the mesh. We'll notice a few different things going on. We have spans um, uh, uh, here. We can see some of the things that we were talking about previously, right? Here, the activator calls event bus transformation, right? Um, here, our event, sync, uh, um, our event sync integration goes off to another dispatcher, so on and so forth. These things, um, uh, because these things are all in the mesh, they can talk to each other, and I didn't have to do any further configuration. Remember, generally speaking, in the past we had loads of bespoke, um, uh, we had loads of bespoke um, uh, ways of handling this. Things had to um, uh, shake hands, uh, so on, uh, things would have to shake hands differently, so on and so forth. So that was the demo. Um, it takes actually quite a while to get there. The upside is, um, if you guys go through the GitHub URL, the upside to that is um, these are things we, generally speaking, wouldn't change a lot, right? We're probably not going to um, significantly change the innards of our Knative serving and Knative eventing implementations, so on and so forth. We may extend them, right? Um, uh, and you'll see how we go about that if you guys go to the GitHub URL. Um, uh, we wire ourselves up for different namespaces a little bit differently uh, there. Um, you'll see it in the resources. Uh, you'll see it in the resources there. So um, that gives us that demo was that attempting to get those cloud native uh, architectural capabilities right um, via K -native, uh, via K -native, uh, set of K native services to talk over the pub sub abstraction that constitutes um, our. Uh, that constitutes our um, uh, cloud native event bus. So I promise you guys uh, um, uh, some advanced topics. Because if you guys uh, will notice, we didn't really do too much crazy, right? We didn't provide any. Um, we do wire up everything uh, we uh, for um, uh, for so, not everything. Uh, some things that need to be wired up for sidecars, right? We inject those. We, um, we watch those handshakes happen. I didn't have to do a lot to get there. I just had to set up my platform, and then uh, developers can just do their thing without having to worry about all of this. But we do have some other things that we probably want to get to, right? And one of those things is external authorization. Right now, we, the, if we think about what it is um, that was providing uh, um, a JOT or some uh, means of uh, authentication and authorization over the mesh, what we had are these things um, that are, we have a dispatcher, we have uh, a controller, and we can wire it up a little bit differently to go from namespace to namespace on the dispatcher. But generally speaking, these, are, these things are global across all of our namespaces, right? So the jot that they're representing isn't necessarily, is just from that same namespace, um, is just from that same namespace. Generally speaking, right, we can provide some bespoke authentication and inevitably authorization by whatever our event source is, sure. But we don't have a really great way to say, hey, this dispatcher should be calling a Knative service outside of that JOT, or this dispatcher should be talking to an event source outside of that JOT that's driven by a service account. 
that probably doesn't work for us, right? Like, I probably just don't have one God identity that talks to Kafka. I don't have one God identity that talks to my Myriad services. I need finer grained authorization than that. And one of the, and generally speaking, I've already, uh, in the majority of enterprises, I've already figured this out. My organization already has these things, right? We've spent probably the last 20, 30 years getting a handle on what um, fine grained control means in our enterprise, right? I need to probably hook into something external, right? And so what we really would like to do, what we probably wanna do um, uh, as we're moving past this is to leverage um, uh, Istio for external authorization and then say, hey, in this particular case, IMC Channel Dispatcher in the namespace Knative Eventing, or in this case, IMC Dispa Channel Dispatcher uh, let's say I've decided to, uh, there's a way in Knative Eventing where I can make sure that my dispatchers are in name, individual namespaces. Hey, Knative Eventing, you're actually um, going to be this guy. You're going to be testing at secure.seo.io. And I can inject um, more fine-grained authentication and identity this way via, uh, via Istio. This allows me to now get back to my fine-grained RBAC that I have in things like a Kafka broker or NATS or whatever that um, thing is that I'm communicating with that ultimately constitutes the event store on my event bus. Oh yeah, and I've already got that stuff. I don't want to redo things. Remember, one of the things we were talking about with governance is we don't want 30 of these things flapping all over the place, right? We want to centralize these notions of authorization, authentication. We want technical consistency across our approaches, right? I don't want to say, hey, in this case, I, uh, I do something wildly different because I don't have, uh, because, hey, the same jot from the same service account doesn't work all the time for all the authorization I need. All right, um, and so uh, um, I had one more thing, um, but I think we'll leave it there. I haven't stopped for questions. Um, we've got about 10 minutes, I think. Um, Nicolette, 10 minutes? Yeah, sweet. So we've got about 10 minutes. Um, we, can, uh, we can call it if you guys want. Um, uh, I would uh, recommend this, um, please. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, please go to that GitHub URL and file GitHub issues. If you guys um, have any questions, you think we did something wrong, you're like, hey, dude, um, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, like, why isn't this working for me, right? Um, remember, I was, uh, we don't have to use OpenShift. We don't have to use Maestra. We don't have to use um, OpenShift serverless, and we don't have to use CamelK. So one, a great GitHub issue might be, hey, I'm using something else. Can you show me how to do that? We'll totally get to you. Don't worry about it at all. If you guys want, um, you can ask all your questions there. Uh, it'll be uh, preserved for better or worse into perpetuity. Um, or uh, guys, more than welcome to hang out for as long as everybody wants. Uh, um, we'll, at some point, we'll probably have to take it to the hall. But um, uh, more than willing to hang out and uh, talk some shop if anybody wants. Mr. Murphy. The specifically the autoscaler? Well, so it's like Knative, uh, Knative serving and Knative eventing out of the box, all depending on your operator implementation or distro, is not going to handshake uh, securely, right? We don't have MTLS. We don't have a means of governing um, who and what those identities are, right? Outside of, again, the basic JOT that's provided by a service ac account, right? We probably have something uh, like an OAuth proxy in our Kubernetes distro, and that probably says, hey, get the heck out of here. Like, who the heck are you? This JOT um, is enabled to do this, right? Um, uh, and that probably, w oh, we would guess something unauthorized at that point. However, um, we would suggest that that's really not enough, right? We want, um, one, to not have 12 different ways of doing this, right? We want to have one way of protecting, of uh, engaging in mutual TLS with our Knative services, right? So from an autoscaler perspective, you're absolutely right. We're not providing any extra metrics. We're not saying, hey, um, uh, uh, 
uh, do this, uh, uh, don't do what you normally do, go over to Istio and collect some stuff that is sitting in um, Elasticsearch or wherever we decided to store that data, right? Um, however, it provides us one uh, a consistent uh, across our organization way of making that MTLS handshake. And then um, uh, two, I don't, um, I had a second point. Yeah, so um, at minimum, it provides us uh, that initial uh, means of not having 20 different bespoke authorizations. But yeah, it'd be cooler if it did some other stuff. In fact, was, if I had a lunch, I could, we could probably spend the rest of the day talking about some stuff I'd like to see in Knative eventing, specifically around this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, you could replace your HPA or KPA um, autoscaler, right? Um, there's nothing uh, in Knative Serving or Knative Eventing that says thou shalt use the out of the box um, HPA and KPA stuff. So, I mean, that's maybe how I would, uh, if I was to start, if I was to say, hey, you know, I would like some other sorts of metrics, I need something richer than, let's say, concurrency, right? Um, or um, uh, whatever I have uh, wired up uh, in HBA, CPU, or something like that, um, uh, to scale up and down. Yeah, you, I would probably hook into something that provides that. Um, so I would imagine, you know, much in the way, uh, so that could be Istio, uh, um, something that interrogates Istio metrics. I would imagine whatever it is that you're, uh, it sounds like you have something in mind. Um, I would imagine you could probably plug that thing into uh, Knative Serving, and that is going to be the thing that's kind of bringing things up and down. So yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I'm unfamiliar with, um, uh, with an appliance that uh, maybe gets us a little bit more fine grained metrics than CPU, concurrency, so on and so forth. But um, I could certainly see, all depending on the use case and what we were after, I, could, I, I think that's a very viable thing to do. Like it should kind of work out of the box ish, I'm guessing, ish. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the move over to Courier, I, I, you know, it, we're all in this like weird place, right? Where we all want to decompose everything, and then we all, um, pardon my French, we all bitch about the footprint that it creates, right? And so Istio being a classic example, right? We, we literally went back to the monolith. The, um, so yeah, I mean, them deciding, hey, we're not gonna lay out this big, huge SEO system. You're just gonna have like this little plain old uh, Envoy proxy that's gonna answer things is I think an attempt to address that. Um, it also had Tecton built into it, so on and so forth, its own build system back in the day. Um, uh, so Knative has gone through uh, a few changes um, uh, without, uh, that's, um, uh, that I think are mostly good, right? Um, some of the C coupling, um, the fact that I could use, I don't have to use um, Istio, I could go, or I don't have to use Courier, I could go use uh, Glue, or I could use um, any number of different um, uh, service message distributions, I think um, is a good thing, right? I don't, the idea that I'm not forced to use Istio per se, I think is a good thing. Kniva Venning isn't there yet, though, right? Can, you will notice from our CRs previously that we were looking at Kniva uh, Servings, like, oh yeah, just yeah, enable Istio, yay, MTLS enabled, sweet, right? Kniva Venning, we actually have to go a little bit farther with, right? Which you'll notice um, in the CR that I listed, we have a lot more stuff injected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, so one of the things that we're uh, solving here, right, is um, we need to, we, we've changed our paradigm, right? And we, we're noticing a significant architectural shift. That implies that we can't just say, hey, I used to have a web service here. I'll just throw it over the fence, and it's over there, cloud native, right? In fact, we uh, would make the case rather laboriously. If you go click on a link that's in the slide deck, um, uh, we make the case that uh, that's 
not even kind of enough to get to a cloud native architecture. We need a lot more. So one of the things that we, uh, so that demo in and of itself attempts to address like the actual uh, thing that it's doing, uh, the pub sub activity um, over an HTTP based control plane um, is a, an attempt to uh, address that. Now um, we have a need, right? Um, and that is ingress into that HTTP control plane. Right, so we can choose something that's not very sophisticated, right? That doesn't really set us up for a complex enterprise use cases later. Like I can't, uh, well, that's not quite true. I probably don't have great hooks to use uh, Open Policy Agent in just Courier, right? Um, I don't have great, I could do some Envoy filters and stuff like that, right? But now I'm kind of like into the innards and guts of Envoy as opposed to using um, semantically meaningful constructs from Istio that I can then extend out into destination policies, various authorization policies like we saw at the end there, so on and so forth. So that's kind of the problem we're attempting to solve for. Um, if you don't really care about um, your ingress and what's happening between these components, right? Yeah, don't need Istio, just roll out with Courier. We're good to go. We've got something that's going to serve up um, our Canadian services. Um, if you don't want serverless, uh, by that I mean if you don't, uh, the scale to zero thing is a, shouldn't be saying this on camera, um, it's a myth, right? We, our use cases almost will never scale to zero, right? But we do want them to handle burst C behavior. And that is where Knative Serving becomes quite handy, right? Um, uh, as Eric mentioned, there's certainly other ways to do that, right? We have HPA autoscalers that come right out of the box in many of our Kubernetes distros. Right? But we don't have a central, technically consistent means of doing that for just about everything. I've got one maybe more question I can take as long as it's very quick. <laughs> or we can go out into the hallway if you guys want to chat more. Are you up right now? Oh. All right. Silence is golden. Thank you, everybody. I hope you guys uh, got something out of that. I'm going to be around. Um, so if you guys want to chat in the hallway, probably have to uh, let these guys go. But um, we can go chat in the hallway if you guys want. Otherwise, um, thanks, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference.